also in the SEC, Florida and Ole Miss. David Cutcliffe leading his team. This was a curious turn of events. Ole Miss tried to slam it in four times from inside the two. Florida stopped them. Ended up getting a safety. It's 7-2. Rex Grossman just before the half. Carlos Perez. Second time they had hooked up. Gators in control at 14-2 until Mark Grossman comes unglued. Well, he's forcing passes into coverage, and it's a great interception here by Matt Greer and Gary Territory. Takes it down, but Rex Grossman today had a lot of problems throwing the football to his receivers. So if Sean Pearson got stopped three times in that previous series down the goal line, got in there that time. And Grossman this time, watch. He'll throw not to one defender, but into double coverage. Matt Greer again picks it up. Watch it. Right here. Put oh. Matt diving into the end zone. Lunge, get there. He does. Pick six. Ole Miss. And the Rebels up 17-14 after three. Here comes Grossman completely overshooting his man. His fourth pick of the day. Ole Miss only had three on the season before this game. And let me tell you, Grisham lived there, Faulkner lived there, none of them could have penned this story. Ole Miss beats Florida 17-14 despite the fact that for the first time in his career, Eli Manning started the game, didn't throw a touchdown pass. What amazing to me, Ole Miss only had 191 yards total offense in this game, and they still defeated Florida. Story is turnovers. You, get, you turn the ball over like that, you'll never win the football game. The Missouri, of course, it was quote gate in that one, the fabricated quotes by Gary Pinkle. And Oklahoma said it would be fired up, and they were. Quentin Griffin, 53 yards. The Sooners were cruising, putting a whooping on Missouri, 23 to 7. But comes a fabulous freshman quarterback, Brad Smith. And Justin Gage, who's very underrated receiver, also played some basketball for the Tigers. 24 yards, 23 14. They're back in it. Not only can Smith throw it, Smith can run it. This guy's a fifth-year senior, right? I mean, he's been around. Oh, yeah, he's been uh, around. Red shirt freshman about is what he is. Freshman? Look at the moves here. I mean, just steps up in the pocket, the speed. Oklahoma's got a lot of speed on defense. Down the sideline, huge play for Missouri. And Missouri trying to get right back in this thing. And look at Smith. Watch Smith. You know, Oklahoma said, we've seen mobile quarterbacks. You ain't seen Brad Smith. Yeah, seen Brad Smith. Rush for 215 yards, couple of touchdowns. They had a 24-23 lead. Oklahoma field goal, fake. Matt McCoy, Chris Chester, touchdown. McCoy's a free safety. Good throw by the free safety. Dropped it in there beautifully. Oklahoma would go for two and get it. To make that call. That I, that's what Bill Raftery would call it. Smith drops back. Last chance they had to send it to overtime, and the Oklahoma defense rises up. Didn't get rid of it, but what a performance by Brad Smith. He had 391 yards total offense, but Oklahoma, sort of like a basketball mentality, survive, advance, and they do. They advance to the game against Texas coming up next week in the Cotton Bowl, 31 24 is the final in that one. In the Big Ten, Camp Randall Stadium was hopping. Penn State, Wisconsin, Paul Jefferson. Football on the ground. Zach Mills, I'll take that. Zach on the spot. You bet he was. 10-0, Penn State's 13-7 game. Mills looking for Casey Williams. Instead, he finds B.J. Tucker, Mark. And what an outstanding job. Just taking it away from the wide receiver. Watch him go streaking down the sidelines. What an excellent pick six for Wisconsin. Wisconsin taking a 14-13 lead. But here comes Larry Johnson. And I think this was huge in this football game. Last week, Penn State held the 54 yards rushing. I said they had to get back to the run, and it was Larry Johnson bullying his way into the end zone. That's a hurt you, Mark. Absolutely. Just lower the shoulder and get in there. Look at this. He's not going to be tonight. You can't arm tackle a big physical back. You've got to go at his waist and bring him down to him. Last year, the Badgers held Penn State to 131 yards offense. Johnson had over 100 yards rushing by himself, ripping off huge chunks of yardage there. 43 of them there. 14 carries, 111, and a touchdown. He did leave the game with a hamstring injury late in the third 28 14 Penn State with the lead Brooks Bollinger you know he's been around he's not going to quit Brandon Williams for the touchdown point after was missed we saw a lot of that on Saturday it's now a 31 23 game when the Penn State defense comes up with a pick Bollinger second of the season Gino Capone doing the honors Penn State 34 to 31 a huge key Wisconsin has been making a living on turnovers they've gotten 16 coming into this game only one one against the efficient Nittany Lion offense. Yeah, I wondered if Wisconsin was for real. They were 5-0 coming in. They couldn't run the football. And guess what? Just like every other Big Ten team. Texas and Oklahoma State. Fourth quarter, 17-9 game. Josh Fields to Rashawn Woods. Rashawn Woods, a very underrated receiver. One of the top wideouts in the country. 17-9. Now, Seymour Shaw. Shaw nearly had 100 yards against this vaunted Texas defense. 99 to be precise. Just a nice job of weaving between the defenders, picking up the first down. 
Here is Fields looking for John Lewis, and suddenly the post. Wow, that's a catch. Oh, and then a deuce. 17-15, they're going for two, and Fields, of course, you're going to look for Woods. You know, when, when you drop back and you throw this on a two-point, you've got to get it deep enough that he doesn't have to come back too far for the ball. Close, just not in. But a good stick by Rod yes, Favors there to keep him out of the end zone. Still 17-15, but the Pokes have another chance. Here comes Fields again, and this time Favors rises up again. He's got a couple of great pure cover corners in Texas, and Babers, Nathan Vasher, and Babers making two huge plays to keep Texas undefeated as they head for Oklahoma next week. Now this is a Texas team that everybody thought should be impressive in this game. I was not impressed offense, defense, nor special teams in this game. They played an Oklahoma State team that came in 2-2. Two and two. They should have rolled over this team if they're the number two ranked team in the country. Well, we'll see what everybody's made of, both Texas and Oklahoma, when they face next week in the Cotton Bowl. Here's Ralphie. Ralphie's leading the buffs he against ran Kansas me over State. Once. El Roberson just about ran over every Buffalo in sight. Short Ralphie needed to jump out there to stop El Roberson. 71 yards to the house. This ties it up at 14. What a big play. Chris, Chris Brown doesn't Chris get Brown. hit going right up the middle. This is exactly what you look for when you try to execute a running play right up the gut. No one touches you. You seal to the right side. You seal onside and backside. He's gone for the touchdown. Do you guys remember when Robert Hodge couldn't make anything happen in the passing game? How about the courage to make this play call? You find Jeremy Bloom, 94 yards, another freshman for the touchdown. What a great throw by Robert Hodge. I think the NCAA should now let Bloom keep his skiing endorsement just because of that play. I agree. I'm not going to let that go. Amen. And we mentioned there have been a lot of big plays. Darren Sproles, explosive out of the K-State backfield. He's got some wheels. He'll log on. He's part of the gone network, 80 yards to the house. Both teams combined for 886 yards of total offense, but some key plays in the fourth quarter by the Buffaloes. Colorado State cuts it to seven. Look at this stick by Donald Strickland. You dream of that hit. Bring your feet! Close gate in front of the ball, and he arrives with bad intentions. 35-28. Roberson. What they used to say, the other team's quarterback must go down, he must go down hard. The Buffaloes hang on against Bill Snyder's team in a highly entertaining game, 35-31. A little surprised Colorado put up that many points on the K-State defense. Absolutely. I thought K-State had a great... Okay, who's the best team in the Big 12 North now? Come on, Mark. Colorado. Denny Stadium this afternoon. Dogs never won in Tuscaloosa. First quarter scoreless. David Green fumbles. Derek Pope has it. He's going the other way. He pushed out on the one. This was a huge momentum changer in the game for Georgia because they would start. They would call for a false start. So the dogs averted disaster on that. Ended up scoring a touchdown. It's now 7-3 and Freddie Gibson. What a catch. This is a fantastic catch. You know, but David Green, I thought, had the confidence to throw that ball right there. And he just threw it up and let his great receiver make a play. 17-9, Ray Hudson getting the pitch from Brody Coyle, and look at this. I, I still say this is a great block by a receiver in the open field. For Sam Collins, it was a good block, but that's the hold they actually that's a called. Call. That's a terrible call, but I thought I saw a hold up around the line of scrimmage that perhaps could have been the one. David Green firing up there. Terrence Edwards making the nice catch over Anthony Madison. Dogs up 24-12. Watch the redshirt freshman, Brody Coyle. Oh, don't throw it. Take it in. Oh, what a great effort. I know Brody's got a great arm. I'm pretty sure he can dunk after watching <laughs> just over the goal line just over the goal line 24 19 now david green trying to get his team going and fred gibson bobbles and charlie pepper another red shirt freshman takes it back to the house and alabama on top 25 24 but waning ticks billy bennett the boot of virtues billy bennett wins it for the dogs and for the first time Georgia beats Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Pat Dye said they weren't man enough to win in Tuscaloosa, but if they did, they could, quote, beat on they chest. Well, they can go back to Athens and beat on they chest because this was a statement game for the dogs. Yeah, Musa Smith came out, ran the ball, and a surprising thing to me, I thought Georgia's defense played fantastic, and they did a nice job of slowing down Alabama's run game. Our like Tyrone Willingham. Notre Dame against his old Stanford club. Chris Lewis said he was looking forward to this. Teo! Teo! Comes and he wants to go to the end zone. <laughs> Teo Johnson, 14 yards. Up. Stanford up 7 to nothing. They would wake up. Rashawn Powers-Neal gives the Irish a 10-7 lead. And now they're doing the Irish jig. Third quarter. 
Chris Lewis. Did I mention sometimes the defense will score for you? Shane Walton here. I mean, reads the eyes of the quarterback. Great pickoff. All of a sudden, the Irish are up 17 to 7. And but wait, there's more. It feels like an infomercial. Ball gets stripped. Courtney Watson back to the house. Two defensive touchdowns on the day. Five on the season for the Fighting Irish defense, and they were running away 24-7. Pat Dillingham. Dillingham has a connection with Stanford with his family. Dillingham, Willingham, 31-7. Fighting Irish. A lot of hams. Undefeated, but no green eggs. And again, up now to the Pac-10 and a monumental day for the Cal Bears against Washington. Kyle Bowler, Jonathan Mackinnon, touchdown. Cal up 14-10. They have they always take the lead in this game. The problem is holding it in the fourth quarter, but this time in the second quarter, Bowler hitting Vincent Strong. 266 yards, Cal does hang on, 34 to 27. In Corvallis, Oregon State, Dennis Erickson hosting UCLA, 7-0, Beavers up, UCLA trying to score a block kick, surprise, surprise, and Dennis Weathersby, the fine TV, is gonna scoop it and take it back, 14-0, Beavers about to apply a can of whooping, or so it would seem. And storming through that hole again. They just step down and get your head in front. Young right man. across the front of the bodies. Now 14-12. Okay, Corey Paws, Tab Perry sets up a four-yard touchdown run. The Bruins regaining control of this game. Tyler Evel is going to find some room, Mark. Wonderful job. He doesn't get touched. This is a great run, but it was the blocking on the left side of the offensive line getting the seal on the left side. Springs him open in the open field. He's gone for the touchdown. 43-30. In the Big Ten on Saturday night, Ohio State and Northwestern, Maurice Corrett looking for his fourth straight 100-yard game, but puts the football on the ground. Had three fumbles on the day for the freshman. He had a tough time. He's not happy with that performance, but this is the 1-3 we know. Yeah, this is a guy we know. Bounces it outside. Great vision, great power, great speed. Young man has it all. 140 yards rushing on the day. Buckeyes had a 24-9 lead. They win it by count of 27-16. Northwestern was not the beneficiary. I'm going to put this diplomatically of some, well, I'll say correct calls in the early going. But Terrible Ohio State, officiated. Well, yeah, really they was. really had some tough calls in the early going. Northwestern Ohio State was wins game. The game. Yes, they were. They played very hard. They played very poorly in their rush defense prior to this game. Purdue and Iowa, what a shootout in this one. Brad Banks hits Dallas Park late. Her parents' as Hawkeyes continue to impress. They are 5-1 and one. the game against Navy. And Air Force on the move. Chance Harridge. Look at Chance Harridge. What a terrific job he's done at quarterback, sort of sparking this Air Force Falcon offense. And not only is he able to run the option, he puts it up top as well. Well, that's the difference. I mean, if you can run the option and you can run the speed option and you do this, and all of a sudden you can throw the ball. But Chance Harridge, I mean, what a complete football player. And then you have an Air Force team that's number one in the Mountain West in defense. You see why this is a good football team. Now people doing push-ups, 48 to 7, Air Force rolling over Navy. They've won 12 of the last 13 Commander-in-Chief trophies and off to a good start this time around. And I mentioned Urban Meyer's team. They drop a 72 spot on Ohio. These guys are going to have to be reckoned with by Marshall and the MAC in all likelihood. And we might have to get that team rated. Four and zero, oh and one and zero oh in the MAC. Now this was sort of a setup Saturday, although most of the top ten struggled mightily. We're going to have a lot of things sorted out over the next couple of weeks. And among the undefeated teams, a lot of great matchups: Oklahoma and Texas coming up at Dallas next Saturday. Assuming Notre Dame and Air Force remain perfect, they will meet on October 9th in Kyle Field. Overtime tied at 41. Dustin Long, I think R.C. Slocum might have found himself a quarterback. Terrence Thomas, seven touchdowns for Long on the day. John Pearson, the point after. New, wide to the right. Aggies by just six. So the nation's leader in touchdown passes with 17 coming in. Here is Cliff Kingsbury. Here is Nehemiah Glover. Here is a touchdown. Five more touchdowns for Kingsbury. 474 yards on the day. And Robert Creech, who missed the field goal that would have beaten NC State earlier this season. Toby Leather, high enough, long enough. Ball game. And Kyle Field, the Red Raiders, dropped 48 and wreck the wrecking crew by one. Big 12 record for Long in that game with seven touchdown passes. And how about the Baylor Bears? They snapped their 29-game Big 12 conference game losing streak. The fighting Kevin Steeles. <laughs> Third quarter, Iowa deep in their own zone, leading by three. Brad Banks, a little, a little pitch out to Dallas Clark, and he's gone. 
ties the longest TD in Iowa school history. Banks was 14 to 22 for 220 now to the fourth, 107 to go. And Banks to Clark again, good combo. Iowa was on the win, 31 28. They're five and one, home to Michigan State next week. be Oregon. They're at Arizona. That would be Oregon. They have O's on their helmet to identify themselves as Oregon. Third quarter, Oregon only up 17-14, but Jason Fife looking, Keenan Howry catching, and at this point, the Cats not doing a good job of bearing down. Oregon up 24-14. Now, let's just see how Howry gets open. He's cutting, he's in, he's out, and then just like that, Jason Martin falls over and doesn't get a letter jacket. 31-14 is your final. Ontario Smith went for 145 yards. You can see